we are starting in a new location and for this online video course on online media essentials we have a total of nearly 90 minutes videos which are again divided into small small videos of 5 to 10 minutes each so you have a total of nearly 8 videos so now you have two options one is to finish the whole course in one sitting the other option is you can watch half of it today and the other half tomorrow that is finished in two days so for the course for the next 70 minutes what you do in your course is you have to focus on it your focus is going to be much more valuable than your time take your notes which will get you results like how many viewers how many clients how many customers how many congregations you're going to get in the next one or two three months another thing is don't be cheap a lot of people they start by the retreat when they realize that it's going to take some hard work they take a step back and i don't want you to be like that be like a warrior you need to invest your time in media tools in education and in systems in any type of online learning or online course you need to spend time and perhaps money i myself in order to learn from media experts and influencers i spend money nearly two lakhs of rupees learning from different influencers learning about media so it's not cheap but you have to give your time and effort so as you start watching these short 5 to 10 minute videos one by one, I suggest that you give your questions, your doubts, your comments below in the comment box. And between the course training, I'll also give you calls to action, to comment or to act. So if all of you are clear right now about that, you can type clear now in the comment box below. So now we are going to talk about how to get high quality media and video production for your business or for your church and ministry. So there are various stages involved here. Preparation is required. Technical and creative processes are involved. Also, you need good equipment, hardware and software. You need editing. You need team motivation and dynamics for your media team. And finally, improving and optimizing your video for online channels and live streaming. So if you boil it down, earlier video production can be summed up into three main parts, which are namely pre-production, production and post-production. But today, you have more. After the third stage of post-production, we have, we have to optimize the video, we have to prepare it for uploading online or live streaming online. And then perhaps you need video marketing or marketing that program in order to create more awareness and more viewers for the videos or for your programs. So we will learn how to optimize and tweak to increase the quality so that ultimately the program or your video will impact and touch your viewer will have the desired effect on them, your church member, your client, or your customer. Back to the three stages. Pre-production is the preparation stage, where you do the planning, the scripting, the writing, the research, and the storyboards. We'll talk about this. And again, production after pre-production is the actual shooting and the recording of the event or of the program, of the video. So let's dive a little bit into pre-production. Pre-production is the work done for film or broadcast program before the full-scale production begins. So it is the planning and preparation stage. So it is the idea and concept stage. Once you come up on a very good topic or a very good subject or which you think has great potential for your audience, for your congregation, then you do research on that topic or the idea. You further develop it through writing, through researching on the internet, through talking to other people, you get a lot of points. And then your writer or yourself, you write down the script Pre-production is uh, actually a very fairly loose term which can also include studio setup, lighting and other things before production. So talking about your idea, it is important to have a strong concept, a good idea to nail down the video's concept and the basic idea behind it. So after you have identified the idea or the aim of the video or the viral topic and after that you have casting or selection of the talents or actors or musicians, you have location scouting where it will be shot whether outdoors or indoors, on the hall, on the church, the equipment to be used, the type of equipment or the type, the number of crew people to be used. And then you prepare the shot list and you have further meetings with the church media or church board regarding the idea, or you have further meetings with your client. You prepare a storyboard and all this happened during pre-production. Now, when you talk about the shoot location, it can be either the church pulpit, the platform, or a big hall, or it can be outdoors. So you need to be aware of the background of what kind of lighting is available and how the set is, the set or the background. As you can see behind me, you see some keyboards. So these are called sets or props. You need to remember that the background should not distract. It should not be too bright. 
but the focus should be on the subject or the person who is speaking or the most important thing which you are shooting. So sometimes the church backgrounds, you need to rearrange them so that they're aesthetic, they're creative, they are perhaps you need even a little bit of lighting or background shadows. It makes it looks good. It adds value to the church ambience. It adds value to the program. When we compare the camera with the human eye, the human eye is actually amazing. It can see in 3D, it can see in all types of different colors, but the camera is man-made. So uh, it can see only in two dimensional and it cannot see all the colors properly. So you have to make the camera to see this. So you have to adjust your background or the pictures so that you may get a pleasing three-dimensional point of view. God made human eyes, but man made the camera. So camera needs to be tweaked. And so to get a three-dimensional look, with some depth behind is, is ideal. So you need to remember to place the subject as far away as possible from the wall or from the background. If the wall and the subject is too close by, you get a 2D pasted kind of a look, so which is not ideal. So to create three-dimensional, the subject or the speaker has to be far away from the wall, from the background. So if something is in front of me, talk about, say my phone is in front of me, then you have a, this is the foreground, this is the subject, and this is the background behind me. So you have a three-dimensional look. So you can arrange things also to have a 3D look. Or you place some strategic lighting behind so that you get a pleasing three-dimensional look. You can also join our Facebook group. The link is given below. And once in a while you'll get emails regarding the course and what to expect and how to use your skills. But important thing is you need to watch all the videos. And if you are sure you'll complete this course, you can write, just type yes 100% below in the comment box.